Do you remember how to find the area of a circle? It's pi times the radius squared. And of course, that's the radius of the circle whose area you're trying to find, right? Let's draw a circle here. You'd think after all these years I'd be better at drawing circles, but I'm really, I've never gotten very good at it. Oh, that one's not too bad, I guess. Now, a sector of a circle is a piece that gets cut out from that circle. So in this case, it would be something like this piece right here. Now, the other piece, this big section here, this is also a sector. So be careful with the problems that you're working on that you know which part of the circle they're talking about. In this case, I'm talking about this shaded region, this sector right here. It looks like it's about 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, but it's not quite, so we're going to have to be careful here. I want to find out what the area of this sector is, not the whole circle. What information do I need? If I were looking for the area of the whole circle, all I would need would be the radius. Let's give this a radius because it'll be helpful. We'll call it 3 inches. So the area of the whole circle is pi times 3 squared, or 9 pi. And again, let's just leave that as it is. We don't need to convert it to a decimal. But I don't want the area of the whole circle. I just want the area of this part of it. Now the circle that I've drawn, the sector that I've drawn rather, is really close to 90 degrees. And technically it's not 90 degrees, but we're going to pretend that it is for a couple of different reasons. One is that it looks like it's about 89 degrees, and that's going to be really hard to work with. And the other is that we want a nice, easy problem to work on, at least the first time around, so that you understand what the process is. And when we get the answer, it'll make sense. It'll, it'll be sort of intuitive that, well, that, of course, that's the answer. And then so you'll believe that the process really works. So we're going to assume that this angle is 90 degrees. And now we have a couple of options. Um, if I give you the, the problem in degrees, then we work it out in degrees. If I give it to you in radians, then we have to work it out in radians. So we have to know, oh, it's actually pi over 2. We have to know what the, what the conversion is, if you will. So how do I know it's pi over 2? Well, years of practice. But if I wasn't sure, I could go over here and I could say 90 degrees times 1. But 1 is going to take the form pi over 180 degrees. Right? Remember that, that pi over 180 degrees is 1. I've chosen pi over 180, not 180 over pi, because I want my degrees to cancel. So this is technically... 90 degrees over 1, so I have a degree symbol in the numerator and a degree symbol in the denominator, and they will cancel. So I've chosen that version of, of 1 rather than the 180 over pi for that reason. Okay, so my degrees cancel. If I divide the top and the bottom by 10, I get 9 over 100, uh, sorry, 9 over 18. So I have 9 pi over 18. Let's go ahead and write that. But then also, 9 goes into 9 and 18. It goes into 9 once, and it goes into 18 twice. So 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. All right, so that's how I got this information. Now we can take our 90 degrees, and we can say, in compare, I know how to find the area of the whole circle, but I don't want the whole circle. I just want to know, how does this, the area of this sector, this portion here, compare to the area of the whole circle? So I'm going to say that that 90 degrees out of 360 degrees is the portion of the circle, the percentage, if you will, of the circle, or the fraction of the circle that I'm interested in. If I'm working in radians, then I have pi over 2 out of the whole circle, 2 pi. And that percentage of the circle times the area of the circle, times pi r squared. And that's what will give me the area of the sector. Basically what I'm doing here is taking a portion of the circle, using the terminology that I try to use when I'm explaining the, the idea of multiplication in, say, Math 98, I would say that this is a fraction of the whole circle. That's a symbol for circle, by the way. A fairly small circle with a dot in the middle of it representing the, the center. You don't want to write the word circle. You can put that down instead. So 
So what I have here is the fraction of, of means time, the area of the whole circle. That's really all that's going on here. So is it a new formula? Yes. But is it hard? No. You don't need to memorize it as much. Just You just need to know what's happening. So the area of a sector is equal to theta, which is the angle that you're given, 90 degrees or pi over 2 in this case. It's going to be different for every problem. Theta divided by 360 times pi r squared, or theta divided by 2 pi. Sorry, I'm struggling with my pen here. Divided by 2 pi times pi r squared. Now in this case, these pi's will cancel, but in this case, we don't have one to cancel with. It doesn't matter. So let's go back to our original problem that we were working out here. I know my radius. It's 3. So I'm going to take the r out and replace it with 3. I've already replaced the, or not replaced, but well, I guess I have replaced theta over 360 and theta over 2 pi. I've already, I've already put that in, in place here. So I'm now going to put in the radius. And all I have to do now is simplify. So this is going to give me 9 over 36 is 1 fourth. So I'm going to have a 9 pi. I have this 9 right here times this pi right here over 9 goes into that once, 9 goes into that four. That is the area of that sector. If I use pi over 2 divided by, oops, divided by 2 pi times pi times 9, then I get, oh, then I get uh, pi over 2 times 1 over 2 pi times pi times 9. These pi's cancel, and I'm left with, let's see, I have 9, and I have pi in the numerator, and I have 4 in the denominator. Oh, look, they're the same. And they should be the same, because I've gone from working with a problem in degrees into a problem, sorry, this one goes with this one here. This problem was in degrees, and I've converted it into an area, which is going to be in square inches. And over here, I should probably draw a line between these. This was my work for the degree version of the problem, and this was my work for the radians version of the problem. right? Up here, I've gone from working in degrees. In fact, I canceled my degree symbol, so now I have no units at all. Um, I have this, which came from the radius. The radius was 3 inches. So r squared is going to be 9 square inches. So that's going to be my, my label. My, in, my, uh, my units. Same thing down here. I was in radians. There were no labels to cancel, but if even if there were, there would be a radians label here and a radians label here. They would cancel. And I'm left with 3 inches. That was in inches. When you square it, you get square inches. So my label here will also be square inches. So I've come out of angle measure. I've come out of degrees. I've come out of radians, depending on which case you're looking at. And I have also in my problem a label of inches, which when it gets squared is square inches. So not only is the number the same, but the label is as well. Now, why does it not matter in this case that I'm in, uh, I can work either in degrees or in radians? Well, if I go back to the formula where I have to be in radians, theta here has to be in radians. It's because we built that formula on the assumption that we were in radians. If you go back to that video, you'll be able to see that 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 angle is named so many radians, and that the arc length there, the, the s value, um, we can find that if we know the radian, sorry, if we know the radius of the circle and how many radians we've swept out, how many, how big the angle is in radians, then we can figure out the arc length. But that angle has to be in radians. Here, we're not, we're not using any of that information, right? We don't have any s's. 
We don't have any, we have some thetas over here. We have some angles over here. But we're not trying to find, uh, we're, not, we're not trying to use this formula. This formula demands that theta be in radians. This one, neither, either of these actually, does not, right? Theta is present in both of these versions of this formula, but it doesn't demand, it doesn't require that theta is in radians in this case. We're just looking at a percentage or a fraction of the whole circle, okay? And so if you take the, uh, I'm gonna, you don't normally see this, but I'm going to put theta degrees here, right? Theta degrees out of 360 degrees is a fraction of a whole circle. Theta radians out of 2 pi radians is a fraction of a whole circle. So in this case, theta can be in either degrees or radians. All right, that's enough for this video. In the next one, we're going to learn how to use linear and angular speed to describe motion on a circular path.